Hey, donut, do how old's donut? About 15 months. Oh, 15 20. months, okay. What are you doing? Sandra out for a Valentine's meal. And to be honest, I can't. Hey. And I also now need to say thank you to Simon Beach, who spotted something so new. Should I start saying, hey, brothers and sisters out there? So it's all being fenced off, so you can't see what they're actually doing. I don't know whether there are, there's no TPOs Have on a it. look at your packaging on your meat. And, and if it has got the red... Russia, what are you doing? You're a very wet dog. Are you a so soggy dog? Are you a wet dog? You didn't like that walk, did you? Hmm? You didn't enjoy that walk too much, did you, Russia? What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Just had Russia out for a, a bit of a walk and it is absolutely leathering it down. Um, she's not a happy bunny. Uh, so I really walked halfway around the block and she's yanking to pull me back. But what I'm going to do, I've got something that I need to post. So while I've got my coat on and my woolly hat on, I'm going to walk up to the post office and get myself a few oh. steps in. Manchester. It always rains in Manchester. <laughs> we've got, apparently, we've got snow on the forecast uh, as well, um, which is going to be very interesting. And I was out with Lee yesterday, and we're in the car, and you can get a, what's your average speed that you've been doing? So I've had this Honda now for a while, as some of you will know. Can you guess what my average speed is? Bear in mind, I make some short journeys and some long journeys. Can you guess what the average speed that I'm doing? One five, 15 miles an hour. When I did the milk when I was about flipping 12 or 13 years old, it'd be quicker, it'd be quicker to flip and have a milk float. Manchester. And did anybody watch the Ben Fogel um, on channel four where he goes to different places where people live i think it was last week he was on i recorded it because so i heard it was in lincolnshire and it was a full-time uh, van lifer uh very interesting so if you're not seeing it i think you can get it back on um i don't know rewind or whatever you call it uh, and uh yeah they're in lincolnshire and then the presenter ben fogel described lincolnshire it's one of the least uninhabited or most wild places in the country. Another reason why we're moving. And I also now need to say thank you to Simon Beach, who spotted something new. Um, Simon, thank you ever so much for becoming our first member. So we just put a member link um, on the YouTube channel a while back. and. We're, we're, we're not really mentioned it to be honest, it's just there. Anyway, um, thank you ever so much for that, Simon. And I've got Valentine's Day coming up. Who remembers garage flowers from last year? <laughs> Those that know will know all about garage flowers. Anyway, I'm thinking this year, there's only a couple of weeks before I go back to the nurseries, of uh, actually taking Sandra out for a Valentine's meal. And to be honest, I can't remember if we've ever actually done that or not. <laughs> so um, I'm just waiting for a message off Sandra to see whether she thinks I should book somewhere uh, and actually have a proper sitting meal before I head back to um, being a campsite warden. Right, I'm not far from the uh, post office. Put the camera away and get this letter sorted out so it's a, it's a sign for that I need doing at the other end okay, that's posted I'm going to insert here in a minute a video clip of Donut Simon my son's dog which was in a video a few days ago and the video file was corrupt it was a bit rubbish um, <laughs> there's a story to tell so me and Sandra went to all the edge some of you will have seen that vlog and when I got home half the files were corrupt when I tried to come to do the video editing and I was not at all happy. So I actually went back to all the edge and re-recorded some stuff, got back 
and some of the files were corrupt. Now, I'd put a new memory card in, I'd reset the camera and all the, all the rest of it. And to cut a long story short, what actually happened was Corel Video Studio, which I do my editing, has had an upgrade and there was um, a video processing addition that was greyed out. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the, the files ended up not being corrupt. So, um, <laughs> after a few hours later, being incredibly frustrated, um, I managed to get them back anyway. Here is Donut without a corrupt vid video file. <laughs> oh dear, man. A couple of weeks to go. And I'll be back in the nurseries. Not long till it's Valentine's Day. <sighs> Shall I get Sandra a meal out or hello, not? Hello, hello. Hello, Donut. Guy, we've seen lots of pictures of you. Oh, but hello, Donut. Hello, Donut. Always oh, likes to leave. Okay. Oh. Oh. Right, don't, Donut, Donut, don't, don't bite me. Oh. <laughs> Lee, it's a vicious big dog, isn't it, Lee? Here you go. All right, come on. Right, don't bite me. There you go, Donut. There you go. Come on, Donut. Come on, come on, come on, Donut, Donut, Donut. There you go. You're wagging your tail. You're a friendly dog. Good girl. There you go. Yeah, he'll let you like it, Lee. Donut. How old's Donut? About. 15 months. Oh, 15 Five months, okay. What are you doing? So she's a bit. She's a bit traumatised by things, isn't she? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Oh, right. It's very nosy. She gets very startled. Ooh. Another thing I keep saying I'll do, I've got these uh, mobile routers that we've now got rid of our um, Wi-Fi out of the house and we have not missed it. Um, so we've been paying, I've just getting on to 30 quid I think it was, um, for a line rental that was never used and a Wi-Fi so Wi-Fi speed, you know, you can get oh, 100 megabits a second speed and blah, blah, blah. And you've been told you need this and you need this. Your connection, do you need that actual speed? So we've been on a mobile network and I'm up, as you all know, I put, put a video out every single day and I'm uploading. Me and Sandra are watching YouTube Facebook in, we've got security cameras on the system, uh, we've got Hive, Hive on us, we've got all sorts. And the system we've got on the mobile is not only saving us money, but it's completely portable. So when we move to Lincolnshire, we can take it. Anyway, we set that system up, which was, sorry, I'm not going to fully show you here, but it's, it's this box here. Um, and it's got the little rabbit ears on it and all the rest of it. Um, and we've been well, well, absolutely well chuffed with that. I think I think the box was about fifty quid, and then we've got um, a Smarty All You Can Eat data card. And I did a bit more research. So back of the nurseries, I have had a Huawei um, router in the past, and I looked at this manufacturer, and I went for. <laughs> I bought myself another one to see how we went along with it, and that's this one here. You can't see properly i'm not gonna go on the other side um but they're, they're both made by zte's and this one here is a, a a slightly faster speed and got a smarty card all connected and just temporarily it's, it's a bit a bit rubbish i've just taped up some aerials up there because when i go to the nurseries i may use this and it is awesome absolutely oh. awesome but I want to show one you one of the something. panics when you lose your landline at home. So if you've got a traditional old BT number, for want of a better word, ours used to be an 0161 number. Um, you're then telling people to use your mobile phones and all the rest of it. So Sandra was always a bit jittery. She said, oh, if we ever give up the home number, we need to make phone calls. What are we going to do? So I did a bit of research on this. And obviously we, we've got a number of power banks. So if we have an outage and all our power goes off, you can plug in a router to a, a, a 240 volt supply to, to pull the router back to life to get you onto the mobile network. And then I thought, you know what? 
can I make the router into in inverted commas a landline number, so like a generic number? So if somebody wants to phone us, can it go to an answer phone and things like this? So I'm not going to show you my number. But what I have got here on my phone, I'm going to ring and watch this. You can plug in an old landline into the router and you can make phone calls just on a conventional phone. Um, so if you've got an elderly person that has to have Wi-Fi, but they want a spare phone just in case the Wi-Fi goes down, ho behold, you've got you've got a solution. Um, and you can go to answer phone and things like that. So did you know you could do that? Oh, you do now. Sorting and packing. Uh, I need to get these bottles to um, some people. And the other thing as well, I'm not too sure whether I'm actually going to do this or not. I don't know whether I'm going to do this or not. For years, you, you, you go into a, a bar or a restaurant or uh, things and people go, Hi, guys. Guys. Hey, guys. And everybody says, Right, guys. And you're not all guys. Some of you are gals, aren't you? You're boys and girls or female and males and all the rest of it. <laughs> I was just going to go, you know... Rather than use the guys, what can I do? So should I start saying, hey, brothers and sisters out there? <laughs> what do you reckon? What 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 saying can you use instead of going, hi, guys? Because that's so annoying now because everybody does it. And I've got some British YouTubers. And why do they do this? They start up their vlogs and go, hey, guys, what's up? And you've got to wave your hand like this because you, you, you have to flick your wrist. Hey guys, what's up, baby? What's up? Why do British YouTubers have to emulate what Americans do? I think originality is a way forward and a bit of creation, isn't it? Hi guys, what's up? <laughs> right, brothers and sisters, if you're watching, if you're watching this, um, I'm going to go and put some chicken in the oven. Also, something now, how true this is, I don't know. But I've got it on good authority, it is true. So if you buy um, meat, whether it be meat from a butcher, a supermarket, a shop, or meat from a takeaway. So some takeaways are kosher. For, uh, so the meat is slaughtered for a religious purpose. Some meat is halal. The meat is slaughtered for a religious purpose. So if you buy a chicken from a supermarket shelf... You need to ensure basically that the welfare of that animal has been taken care of the best that it can. And we have a thing, we have a thing here called Red Tractor, don't we? So you've got the Red Tractor, we've got the Red Tractor logo. So these haven't been free range, so these have been kept inside, but it's British Indoor, Fresh Class A. You see there, this number here, GB4669. Right. So that is a packet of chicken. That GB4669, my understanding is the slaughterhouse. So you can track what slaughterhouse slaughtered, in this case, the chicken. It could be beef, it could be lamb. And on here, there is no mention if that meat has been slaughtered for religious purposes. Halal, kosher, etc. I'm trying to find where I can put in GB4669 to find out a little bit more about that slaughterhouse. Go into your fridge. If you're a meat eater, I'm sorry vegans out there and vegetarians, okay. I'm sure if you're a vegan, you could go and track down a, an avocado to make sure it was pulled off a tree humanely. Anyway, have a look at your packaging on your meat and if it has got the red tractor logo which it should have and you've got the slaughterhouse tell me what do you find oh, walking in the rain today hello alpaca how are you what are you doing hello 
Where are you going? Hmm? Are you the leader? Oh, hang on a minute. I've got a pony, a donkey, and three alpacas all looking at me. Come on. Hello, how are you? You come in. <laughs> Hello. So I was down here just the other week, very recently, walked down where the brook is. And here there was an entire woods. A whole woods which you may have caught on that video clip that I've done. Basically, there's a planning application gone in for airport parking. And the entire lot, then you can see here, the entire lot has got a bulldozer. The entire lot has been ripped out. Look at look at this, the whole wood's gone. Everything. Um, and that is exactly what's going on here where, where we live that, I, oh my god all the trees are down so it's all being fenced off so you can't see what they're actually doing i don't know whether there are there's no tpos on anything uh, not, not that i'm aware of um yeah the whole the whole lot has all been blacked out so you can't see them i don't know if you can see a digger there Yeah, the, the entire woods has been ripped out in um, in just over a week. Hang on a minute, there's a bit of a path here. Let's see. Oop. The whole lot has gone, the entire woods. There you go. And again. We're going on about the whole green belt getting ripped up. So all these cars that are parked here are um, airport parking. So if you come to Manchester Airport and you pay for, you pay a company to take your car away and look after your car while you're on holiday, where does it end up? There's a lot of scandal and a lot of um, companies that were uh, cowboys with um, airport parking in the in the area and some of these cars for airport I'm not saying this company were being abandoned in pub car parks on side roads uh, anywhere basically where there was, wasn't any double yellow lines um, and all down here I got involved with somebody from a, um, a place called Davenport Green he's in prison now for an airport car parking so-called scheme. Hey, rant, 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 Neil. You're having a right good rant today, aren't you? Places for everyone and joint development planning and compulsory act. Town and country planning notice of consultation, which is the biggest load of cobblers you've ever heard. Mark my words. Here, so if you know the area where I am, that's Wood Lane, Thorley Lane, Clay Lane, and basically every bit of greenery the whole lot the gap between Timpley and the airport what's called the Timpley wedge is going 2,000 homes minimum of probably each house two people that's 4,000 people there is no schools there are no doctors there is no den dentist the local hospital a and &E is closed the whole, the roads are full of potholes because the council can't fix the existing road network that they've got. But hey ho, all they can do, a couple of thousand homes, and do you know what they're doing? Ching ching, council tax, um, bringing in the uh, extra revenue. We might take a walk 
before I go back to the nurseries over Ash Farm public footpath and we might just show you why we're so upset about what's um, what's going to happen.